Babylon is that original um, hoarded knowledge has gone bang Freemasonry, bang Christianity, bang Judaism, bang secret societies and, and, all, and all these different um, uh, parts of our society today actually come from the same source. They're laughing at us, but not for long. Now this is classic, the, the Babylonian trinity. In Babylon they worshipped the trinity of Nimrod, who also became known as Baal, Queen Semiramis, the mother goddess, also known as um, Easter, apparently it was how it was produced, Easter is where Easter comes from, and the third point of the Babylonian trinity was the virgin sun, Tammuz, a um, mirror image of the story of Jesus. Now what <laughs> happened is when uh, Semiramis was supposed to have been the mother of Nimrod and then married him and stuff like that, and when Nimrod died, Queen Semiramis, the goddess of Babylon, um, decreed that he would uh, be symbolized as the sun. She said he'd gone to the sun and became known as Baal, the sun god. And she claimed that she had been uh, miraculously impregnated by the rays of the sun, Nimrod, and gave birth to a virgin son, Tammuz, who was a reincarnation of Nimrod, therefore father and son were one. I've heard that somewhere before. Give us a clue. And so all through the ancient world, you'll find the um, focus on the sun. In, in often it's symbolizing um, Nimrod. This is uh, Sri Lankan. Um, and this is uh, Roman. And one of the ways they symbolized the sun was as a lion. The royal animal, the king of the jungle, the king of the solar system with the long mane, the rays of the sun. This is a, a throne from the Roman Empire. And so you'll see the lion all over British um, heraldry and royalty and stuff like that. Symbolizes the sun, symbolizes uh, Nimrod, the god of Babylon on the side of that Freemasonic headquarters in Boston, the Sun. Again, all these different, apparently unconnected areas of our society are controlled by the same force and come from the same knowledge. Now, one of the ways that they symbolized Nimrod was as the fish god, who they called him, or one of the names they called him was Dagon. And this is how um, they um, portrayed him. Dagon, symbolically. Well, I'll be Dagon. <laughs> when they moved to Rome, they used the same symbolism. The Roman church is just the church of Babylon. This guy turned his toes up like, with a, the fish head on his hat. And so you'll see the symbolism of Nimrod in um, the military and stuff, Nimrod aircraft and various other things. Nimrod and Osiris were the same deity. It's interesting that what they, what they said about Nimrod was that when he died, Queen Semiramis found all parts of him except the willy, symbolic of the bloodline I guess, and in, uh, in uh, Egypt they said that the wife of Osiris, Isis, who was Egypt's version of Semiramis, um, um, he, she found every part of the Cyrus except um, the willy. I mean, it's just a recurring story. Um, Queen Semiramis was known as also as Easter, which is where we get Easter from. The Christian festival comes from Babylon. And uh, Queen Semiramis, uh, this is the uh, Easter Ishtar Gate, the rebuilt one in Babylon now. And you find this lady, who is a real goddess uh, symbol of the Illuminati, um, everywhere. This is an original Babylonian piece of artwork with um, Ishtar, the, the Babylonian goddess, and she is protected by the owls, which will become very significant before we get to lunch. Now, what we're looking at, again, is the same knowledge expressing itself in different ways, different names. What they said about Queen Semiramis was she was the virgin mother of Tammuz. What they said about Isis is that she was the virgin mother of Horus. When they moved to um, Rome and created the Roman church, 
they turned Mother Mary into a deity and what do they call Mother Mary? The Virgin Mother and the Queen of Heaven. It's just a front for the knowledge and they've sold the people a cover story called a religion. This is a, uh, an image of how they used to portray Queen Semiramis Estar in Babylon. That's how they portray Mother Mary and Jesus to this day. That's how they portrayed Isis and Horus. That's how they portray Mother Mary in an English church not far from me. Semiramis, Isis, Mary, same uh, deity, different name as they went off into different areas. And the, the, the basic same knowledge is there. And they also talked about, uh, the, the, the brought about the uh, image of the Black Madonna because what they do, the, the Illuminati, is they reverse everything. If something is white, they'll make it black. If something's black, they'll, ter they'll turn it white. If something is supposed to point up, they'll point it down. This is why the um, uh, most obvious um, symbol of Satanism is the reversed um, star pointing down. Again, in the, inside the uh, temple in Boston, the goddess. And this is the mother lodge of Freemasonry in London. This is where they launched Freemasonry into the American colonies. I think it, this was started in the uh, early 1700s. Very much part of the manipulation of America. Now, they, London is a big place. It's got endless streets. Where did they park the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry? Great Queen Street. What did they call Samiramis Estar in Babylon? The Great Queen. This is the background to all these apparently unconnected organizations. So when they said, oh, we, 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 we um, named Virginia after Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. Well, first of all, Queen Elizabeth I was no more a virgin than Madonna. And secondly, it was the Virgin Queen of Babylon that it was named after. This is uh, the way, or one of the ways, they portrayed Queen Semiramis in Babylon. I've seen her somewhere before. The Statue of Liberty was given to New York by French Freemasons in Paris who knew what it really symbolized. Queen Semiramis, the Illuminati goddess from Babylon. The um, goddess of the French Republic from where the Statue of Liberty came is, again, the image of Semiramis. The goddess of Colombia, Semiramis. In Babylon they symbolized uh, Nimrod as a fish and they symbolized Semiramis, Estar, as a dove. Um, in, when they moved to Rome they, they called her Venus Columba, Venus the dove. Still in French today the word for dove is Columba. And that's why we have Columbia all over the place. Christopher Columbus, um, that wasn't his uh, real name, but he became known as Christopher Columbus. Columba, the dove, taking the branch into the Americas. The dove of the Babylonian goddess. So we have British Columbia, uh, District of Columbia, uh, Columbia Pictures, Columbia University, Columbia Broadcasting. On the uh, note paper of the Supreme Council of the Freemasonry Movement in Great Britain, the dove. On British royalty, um, the sticks that she holds, septics or sectors or something, I don't know what you bloody call it, call them, um, the dove. Oh, it makes me bloody laugh, you know. You know when you, 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 you're in a, in a room with a queen, you, 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 the staff and stuff, they have to go out like that. So, so the queen don't see her back, you know. She probably only th thinks people only have fronts. I mean, what are we doing? Oh, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I guess when I talked about satanic rituals at Balmoral Castle, I've lost my knighthood, have I? Do you reckon I have? Do you I've lost it? I think I probably have. When, um, 
Nimrod died, it was decreed that he would, like Tammuz, because he and Tammuz were one, father and son, would be symbolized from then on with a flame or a torch, the symbol of Nimrod. So we have Queen Semiramis holding the torch of Nimrod. It's all Babylonian symbolism and it's all the same network. This is uh, the Statue of Liberty right next to the River Seine, in fact on an island in the River Seine in Paris. Mirror image. Because what happened is as those bloodlines moved out of Babylon into Europe, they took the symbolism with them and, and dropped it off. And then when they went to the Americas, they took the same symbolism. That's why you see it in both places. Um, when they killed Kennedy in Dealey Plaza, just um, down from where he, he was shot, um, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry uh, put up a uh, obelisk, another ancient symbol, the, the, uh, the um, phallic symbol, the bloodline symbol. Uh, and on top they put the flame of Nimrod. We did it, we're telling you, but you can't see it, can you? On Kennedy's grave, in Arlington Cemetery, the flame of Nimrod. They, they used things like, it's the eternal flame. Oh, please. Um, on, on the place of the Pont d'Alma Tunnel, where people take their tributes to Diana, where she died in the set-up car crash, you have a massive and exact replica of the flame um, held by the Statue of Liberty. So, and the, the candle was also used to symbol, uh, symbolize uh, Nimrod in Babylon. And so we come to Samos, the mirror image of Jesus. If you want a son of God who died so our sins could be forgiven um, and uh, was born on December 25th, well, take your pick. Uh, there are a stream of them all over the place. On the left is Horus, on the right is Jesus, and uh, we also had Tammuz, who was the, uh, one of the original models in Babylon. Um, Horus uh, and Jesus. Jesus was the light of the world, Horus was the light of the world. Jesus said he was the way, the truth and the life, Horus said he was the truth, the life. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Horus was born in Anu, the place of bread. Jesus was the good shepherd. Horus was the good shepherd. Seven fishers brought a boat with Jesus. Seven people brought a boat with Horus. Jesus was the lamb. Horus was the lamb. Jesus identified, uh, was identified with a cross. Horus is identified with a cross. Jesus was baptized at 30. Horus was baptized at 30. Jesus was the child of a virgin. Mary Horus was the child of a virgin Isis. The birth of Jesus was marked by a star. The birth of Horus was marked by a star. Jesus was the child teacher in the temple. Horus was the child teacher in the temple. Jesus had 12 disciples. Horus had 12 followers. Jesus was the morning star. Horus was the morning star. Jesus was the Christ. Horus was the Christ. Jesus was tempted on a mountain by Satan. Horus was tempted on a mountain by Set. By set. Do you reckon there's some uh, connection there? Um, do you reckon? I don't know. Uh, my, my jury's out. <laughs> same knowledge, same control. This is Mithra, who was said to have been born on December the 25th and died at what we call Easter. This was a deity worshipped uh, in the Roman Empire and was basically uh, replaced in the Roman Empire by uh, the worship of Jesus. And the reason people move from Mithra to Jesus so seamlessly is apart from the name, nothing seemed to have changed to them. And of course, the cover story religion and the cover story book, that holds the people here so they don't get into multidimensional infinite consciousness and ask questions. Mustn't ask questions. God doesn't want us to know. So Jesus was the light of the world. Yes, the sun. Jesus is coming back on a cloud. Yes, the sun. Coming back tomorrow morning, actually. This is where the, the symbolism where a lot of this came from. The ancients, they used to um, symbolize uh, the year with a cross, creating the four seasons. I remember the Four Seasons, I'm old enough. Frankie Valley, remember? <laughs> he used to sing like someone was holding something very tightly, do you remember? 
cross and they put the sun on the cross. Ooh! Matter starts working. Um, at this point was the winter solstice and they said at this point that the sun was born. Um, because uh, in the northern hemisphere the sun reaches the lowest point in its power on the winter solstice, December what, 21st, 22nd. Three days later is the 25th in our calendar and that's when they said that the sun was born again and started its journey back to the peak of its power in the summer at the summer solstice. And one of the ways that they, and this is why, that so many, the vast majority of these uh, sun deities like Jesus were, and, and Mithra were given the birthday of December the 25th because it was the birthday of the sun, that one. And um, they used to symbolize the, the uh, cycle of the sun in relation to the earth as the life of a man going through the year. So he would be a baby here, become a big strapping strong man there the, uh, the summer solstice and then would get uh, more and more weak and old and frail until he became like old father time here. Now, one of the ways that they symbolized the sun at the peak of the power of this man-sun symbolism was with long golden hair symbolizing the rays of the sun at the peak of their power in the summer. I've just told the story of Sam Sun because what happened in the Samson story is as Samson came down into the house of Virgo the Virgin, the house of Delilah, his hair was cut as the rays of the sun got less powerful and he lost his strength. It's all symbolism which they say no, literal, literal, take it literal, cover story. Real background esoteric symbolism. Esoteric knowledge, public religion. And so you have this a symbol all over the place of the sun um, in that symbol I've just been showing you. This is all around the square uh, where the Ritz Hotel is in Paris where Diana uh, left of course on her journey uh, to her assassination. This is the symbol of NATO, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Illuminati and a stepping stone to their world government. The sun and the cross. This is the symbol of the CIA, another expression of the sun cult controlled by these people. The cross and the sun on the cross. Uh, this is uh, in a financial building right next to St Paul's Cathedral in the City of London. The City of London, what is now known as the financial district or the square mile where the, the, uh, all the banking system comes out of in the Bank of England, that is one of the real major heart centers of manipulation of this planet um, in terms of the secret societies of the Illuminati. And um, St. Paul's Cathedral is right in the heart of that. And across the road is this, and there you see the same symbol, the black sun, reverse symbolism, but basically the same as what I'm talking about. And it, when they built the cities, because their the symbolism is staggering in terms of its detail, when they built the cities, they put these symbols in the cities, their major uh, centers of control. This is Paris and the Arc de Triomphe. And this is um, one of the major uh, centers of the, the street plan of Paris, which is a, a big, big Illuminati center. There are 12 streets going off from the circle and the arch is very much Freemasonic symbolism. That's why you have the Royal Arch of Freemasonry, etc. And in terms of Paris, They've even gone so far as to put the sun on the road. And this is known as the, the star um, circle. And if you um, look at the cross in the circle, they've even done that. A lot of the, the great artists and writers, some of them not for malevolent reasons, um, put this uh, knowledge, secret knowledge, into um, their paintings and their writings. This is Leonardo da Vinci's famous uh, picture, The Last Supper, in which he's symbolizing that symbol again. He symbolized Jesus as the sun. What they used to do, the ancients, is they used to put a halo around the deity that symbolized the sun 
to symbolize that it was their sun deity and not a real person. So that's where the halo comes from. And what um, uh, da Vinci has done, who was a secret society initiate, and it's one of the reasons he had so many uh, advanced thoughts and advanced uh, predictions um, that have uh, come to pass, um, he's broken up the 12 disciples into four sets of three. Uh, again, it's that symbol um, symbolized as, as a painting. I mean, why is it that all these bloody deities have 12 followers? Why do we have King Arthur and the 12 knights of the round table? The sun, the uh, astrological circle, the months of the year, that's the symbolism of it uh, in part. And actually at the entrance to that Freemasonic temple where I was sat in the, in the chair um, is that picture which uh, Freemasons would understand what it uh, means. And again, there's a, a depiction of Bell, the, the god Bell, the sun god Bell, uh, on an ancient standing stone. There's the halo. That's what they used to do. That's where it comes from. So we have the phonetic use of this symbolism also with the Liberty Bell, Bell Baal, and the, um, the rising sun. Uh, Horus was known as the rising sun. Um, rose in the morning at the start of a new day. Uh, so Nimrod was also symbolized as the rising sun. And we talk about Christ has risen. Yeah, the sun has risen. Uh, this is why you get uh, the house of the rising sun coming up again and again. Phoenix, the rising sun, the sun coming back um, from the dark place. Uh, George Washington on his uh, famous sun chair had this symbol, the rising sun, Horus, Nimrod being a high Freemason, knowing exactly what it symbolized. In that Freemasonic temple in Boston, the rising sun. You'll see this um, coming up again and again. You'll see it coming up again and again. I like it. Um, especially around here. It's hot, isn't it, this time of year? So in Illinois and a lot of the other uh, states, you'll see the sun coming up over the horizon. I mean, Illinois is not famous for its sunshine. Um, and so you, you, you have, again, the recurring theme. Now. You've got to have it in close-up to realize um, what this is. This is above Downing Street. Tony Blair's home currently. But what are the chances of that? Look, that. The rising sun, and it's even got the rays of it, the same as the sun chair of George Washington. And there's NBC News. Because... You see this recurring symbolism in these different organizations in the modern world, what we call the modern world, because they are symbols that all these different, apparently different organizations are controlled by the same force. It's a secret language. The Mormon church around in Salt Lake City and stuff, you find the rising sun and the reversed satanic symbol up. These are all, as the Rolling Stones said, bridges to Babylon and so is the control that's expanded more and more. Christmas, um, it go goes back to Babylon and that period. Um, uh, you look at uh, San uh, Santa uh, Claus, um, it, it uh, is a symbol for Satan, Santa, Satan. Um, the um, tree, the um, Christmas tree, um, is a symbol of Tammuz and Nimrod for various uh, mythological reasons. Um, the Yule log goes back to Babylon, the child log. Um, Ishtar, Ishtar um, said that she came to earth from the moon in an egg. That's why we have the Ishtar, Ishtar egg. Um, Tammuz was uh, famous in the Babylonian uh, myths for being fond of rabbits. That's why we have the Easter bunny, the Ishtar bunny. In Babylon, they used to um, eat uh, buns with a T cross on them. Um, Tammuz was said to have been killed by a boar, a pig. And so from that time, it was decreed that they would eat ham at the uh, commemoration of his death, Easter, ever um, from that point forward. That's why we have the Easter ham. The period of the Christian Lent was the same period of the 
um, commemoration of the death of Tammuz decreed by Semiramis in the Babylonian myths. Everywhere you see the same thing and what it's symbolizing is the same point of control. Other secret codes of the Illuminati, the skull and bones. This is a Freemasonic apron from the 1800s. Um, when the Templars were arrested in France and, and what have you, they were accused of using the skull and bones in their rituals. Um, and it comes right through to the present day. That's why the most infamous secret society in America is called the Skull and Bones Society. It came out of Germany originally. This takes in bloodline students, I think it's 15 every year, and the ratio of them that become significant players in American uh, society and American government, either behind the camera or in front of it, is um, far, far, far higher than the general student population of the country. And um, one of the key families of the Skull and Bones Society is the Bush family. Prescott Bush, the grandfather, Skull and Bones, Father Bush, Skull and Bones, and Boy Bush, Skull and Bones. In fact, um, the last election was a classic of its kind. There are, like I said earlier, apparently, I don't know now, they tell me about 218 million Americans at the present time. At any point, there are a few hundred members of the Skull and Bone Society alive at any one time. What are the statistical chances of two initiates of the Skull and Bone Society running against each other for president? But that's what happened in 2004. And both were asked once only, um, I think it was on uh, PBS, um, by a sycophantic interviewer, where shall I lick, sir, about the Skull and Bones membership. He said it was too secret to talk about, and then the interviewer changed the subject. I mean, you're an interviewer. What do you mean? What do you mean it's too secret to talk about? You're the you want to be president? You are president. Can't tell me you, 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 that, that your secret society is too secret to talk about. He said the same, basically, and the same interviewer changed the subject. The Skull and Bones uh, is a massive manipulator of American uh, politics. And this is why, you know, American presidents are not elected by ballot. They are selected by blood and selected by money and secret society uh, networks. There you go. Vote for me. That's what it is. Unbelievable. Now this is, uh, of course, a classic uh, Illuminati symbol going way, way back. The um, uh, pyramid and all-seeing eye. And that is on the dollar bill. It was put there in 1933 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt from the De Molay, uh Secret Society. And there's a massive Freemason, and here we go. And uh, basically what that says is that... Uh, Writing is, uh, he favors our undertaking, new order of the ages. A new world order is one of the code words for this um, control agenda. And um, they've stopped using that so much since Father George was using it all the time. And then when people started pointing out new world order, that's the code. They don't use it so much now, uh, very rarely hear it. And so you'll see advertisements with the uh, all-seeing eye and the pyramid all over the place. When the uh, Pentagon came out with this organization to um, put propaganda out about what was happening in Iraq and the, the invasion and all the rest of it and the war on terrorism, the Information Awareness Office, my goodness me, is that Orwellian or not, um, look what they chose for the symbol. The looking over the world, the all-seeing eye, the all-seeing eye, the top of the pyramid of control. This is the symbol of British intelligence. MI5. There you go. The pyramid. There's the eye. Like I said earlier, the, uh, and by the way, that fleur de lis is a, 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 a Merovingian symbol. Like I said earlier, when you get to the top of these organizations, Mossad, British intelligence, the CIA, they merge. They're a global organization. This is MI6 again, the building next to the Thames, the feel of the... Uh, 
uh, pyramid with a capstone missing. This is Dealey Plaza, the street plan, Dealey Plaza where Kennedy was killed. And if someone said to me, um, without knowing all the rest of it, look at that, that's significant, I'd say, well, come on, mate. You know, there are coincidences, don't go mad. But when you do uh, the research into this year after year, the obsession with symbolism is um, extraordinary. This was actually the site of the first Freemasonic temple in Dallas. It's a sacred place or an important place, uh, the Trinity um, area of um, Dallas, Dealey Plaza. I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, CBS, the all-seeing eye looking at you. CBS, NBC, same controlling force. Um, this is the uh, Salt Lake City, the Mormons, the all-seeing eye. And then you've got the, the obelisk, which is symbolic of the phallic symbol, the bloodline, genetics. Um, and of course we've got the biggest one in the world, stone one in the world, in the Washington Memorial. In fact, there's a bigger dick just over here in, a, in the house. <laughs> Um, and you've got the church spire. These are all manifestations of the same thing. That's the uh, Washington Freemasonic Memorial there. Again, the same thing, recurring. And so, when you look at the, like the Allies in the Second World War, fighting the enemy, the Nazis, it looks different from this perspective. Yes, fighting two sides, ooh, controlled by the same people. So you've got this Nazi, he's won the bloody lottery, this bloke, look at him. He's got the, he's got the uh, Maltese cross, he's got the uh, skull and bones, he's got the uh, swastika symbol going way back that the Illuminati used, and he's got the eagle, which is an expression, a symbol of the phoenix, the sun re-emerging. And the symbolism is not just there to... Uh, you know, take the mick or anything, it's there for a reason and some of it is there because it affects us in terms of law. When I first came to um, America, what I couldn't work out is if I was in a federal building or I saw a court on the television or I, I spoke in a school once, the American flag had a gold fringe around it. Why? I've, it's not got the American flag, it's not got a gold fringe around it, but all these federal ones have. And I realized years later that it's to do with the international law of the flags. In the ancient times when they used to trade with, um, in ships, uh, with ships and stuff, and still today, the flag flying on the ship when you entered it depicted the law you were accepting you would come under by entering the ship flying that flag. What the buggers have done is brought that law ashore. So now when you enter a building, you are accepting the law of the flag being flown on that building. Now they don't tell us. This is why, when you look at the courts of America, behind the bloody judge, the American flag has a gold fringe round it. What's it mean? A gold fringe means that you are accepting the jurisdiction of British maritime law, commercial law, the law of contract, and you are accepting that any constitutional rights you have do not apply in that place with that flag. This is just some of the background to the detail of the scam. On the soldiers in Iraq, why in their uniforms do they have an American flag with a gold fringe round it? because they are not there for America, constitutional America. They are there for the corporation that controls America, masquerading as the American government. In the streets of uh, Washington, because they, they started with a blank sheet of land in Washington, they went mad. Um, the, um, 
reversed star there, five-pointed star, um, the satanic symbol, uh, symbol, that's at the entrance to the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in London. And um, you'll find that again, the satanic symbol, um, in um, the Mormon uh, church network in Salt Lake City because it is a satanic organization although the vast majority of people who are Mormons have no idea they are sold the public religion and they don't know about the real background to it I was taken around Salt Lake City by two lovely uh, uh, girls who had paid to come from Hong Kong and Thailand they'd saved up for years to come to take people around and try to convert them to the Mormon religion and pay for it with their own money and I just said they were lovely and I said to them at one point I said can you explain to me if there's any significance of Joseph Smith and um, the founders being Freemasons and one of them said to me what's a Freemason that's how it's done And so, um, this is uh, from a, a book called Talisman of the United States, which looks at all the esoteric symbolism in, in the Washington Street Plan. This is um, uh, the uh, White House, this is the Congress building. Um, oh, sorry, the other way around, this is the White House, the Congress building. And in the Street Plan, you have the same satanic uh, reversed pentagram. What um, they do to symbolize the negative is either reverse it, that's why you have the reverse pentagram, or they distort a symbol so it's no longer in balance. And if you go through there, that's 16th Street, around there uh, you find a very strange building in Washington, which I'll come to in a second. Uh, what, what the thing I was going to mention is the center of a pentagram is a pentagon, and that's why we have the head, uh, headquarters of the American military as the pentagon. Um, so, like I said, just about here you find a strange building in Washington. Here it is. It's like something out of ancient Egypt or Greece or that kind of uh, period. Um, and behind there is our old friend, the sun coming up over the horizon. Horus, Tammuz, Nimrod. And this is the supreme headquarters, 33rd degree Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The idea that Freemasonry started in what the 16, 1700s and took over from the old Masonic guilds is total crap. It's just another name for a strand of control and manipulation going right back from the, to the ancient world. Again, inside that Boston Masonic headquarters, on the wall is this picture. They don't think they go back to the 16, 1700s they come through from the ancient world uh, putting people in positions of power and influence to control society friend to friend from centuries past to centuries to come oh I don't think so again the Rosicrucians is a pyramid there's lots of people involved in the Rosicrucian organization who are seeking enlightenment but it's another pyramidal organization that locks into the network this um, Capitol Hill is not a political building it is a secret society temple and I've seen that somewhere before uh, yeah that's where St Paul's Cathedral in the heart of the city of London from which so much of American government and society is controlled now the reason they call it Capitol Hill and you see Capitol Hill a lot around America it comes from um, in uh, the time that the Illuminati were in, in control in Rome, headquartered in Rome. It comes from Capitoline Hill, which was a sacred place for the Illuminati in terms of their rituals and initiations and their secret society network at the time they were headquartered in Rome. Rome, by the way, in the Vatican is still enormously important in the web, um, right there at the spider center. Um, but that's where Capitol Hill comes from. It's all symbolism. And before we have um, a bit of lunch, I just want to bring, bring this in. Because these three things um, all connect. And they all come back to the same force again. As I was saying earlier, um, it's, it's so difficult for people who 
watch the news and get their information from the mainstream to comprehend that children in their own neighborhoods could be being sacrificed in rituals. But the thing that staggered me as I started to research this in detail was not that it was going on, but the scale of it is staggering and the kind of people involved in it. The people we see on the news, the people that stand up and pontificate about peace and caring about people. See, when you're sacrificing children, you have no problem with dropping bombs on civilians in Iraq. It just doesn't enter the empathy equation. Because there is no empathy. And this is what these guys are involved in. And of course, not a million miles from here, is a place called Bohemian Grove. This is the Russian River. It's not Russian there, but there are times of the year when it does. Uh, the Russian River, and behind those trees are, I think it's 2,700 acres of redwood forest, a playground for the elite called Bohemian Grove. Go down that road and there you go. It's a place where the elite go to take part in grotesque rituals and many other things. Now, again, Bohemian Grove will be a pyramid. There'll be members of Bohemian Grove, a lot of them that go at certain times of the year who are not involved in this stuff. But the elite go at certain times when they bloody well are involved in it. And it's interesting how the faces turn up. This is a guy called Glenn Seaborg who was involved in the development of plutonium. Thank you, Glenn. Great gift to the world. Much appreciated. Speaking at Bohemian Grove in 1957. Who is it sitting next to him? Oh, it's Uncle Ron. And who's this? Tricky bloody dicky. <laughs> Two people from massively different walks of life, one at this time a B-movie actor getting on and off his horse, and the other one a soon-to-be career politician, taking on Kennedy in the 60 election, in fact he was a career politician already. And they both are there at Bohemian Grove, and both go on to be presidents of the United States in a country where anyone can be president. This is what's going on in the background. And what do they do at Bohemian Grove? Well, they have rituals, and the main focus of the ritual is a 40-foot sodden stone owl. And there's people in the hoods and the bloody gowns doing these Babylonian bloody rituals and then coming away and running the transnational corporations and deciding to bomb Iraq. This is um, some filming done by a guy called Alex Jones who uh, does a lot of gr uh, great work down in um, Texas getting this stuff out. And he got in there and he, he did it in a hidden camera. Uh, the opening ritual, cremation of care they call it, and over here are the, the onlookers, the grovers, then there's the lake and here's the people doing the ritual. And uh, it's a better picture of it. Now these are the people who are running our bloody world. And what happened in this uh, ritual, and it was, uh, there's a video, you can get the video, is um, eventually a uh, kind of a raft is floated in here with a body on it. Now they say it's a, uh, an effigy. I don't know either way because my information is that the sacrifice and stuff goes on in much smaller elite groups, not in front of the, all of them, but who knows? They say it's an effigy. They then um, pick the effigy up, they put it on that bloody altar in front of the 40 foot stone owl and they set it alight. And whether it's an effigy or not, the sound on the, the Jones um, recording is particularly good. Um, beamed out on loudspeakers. Um, 
when they set fire to this effigy, uh, this massive blood-curdling scream of agony comes out of the loudspeakers. Now, one of two things happening here. Either it's not an effigy, or they've actually gone to the trouble of recording a blood-curdling, horrific scream to play as part of the ritual. E either way, these are running our world, these people. And they, are, they, they have any em empathy uh, problem with slaughtering civilians. It's a blood fest to them. So it's a mass ritual, sacrifice. And the symbol of the Bohemian Club is the owl. One of the uh, ways that Samiramis Ishtar, Ishtar is symbolized by name is as Lilith. There's the one version of her and there's that original Babylonian piece of artwork for the Babylonian goddess and she is protected by the owls 